Hey everybody, it's I Want To Be Retro. Today we're going to take a look at running Libra NMS, a network management system, on Linux. To get started, launch the terminal and run sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade to install any available software updates. Then we'll use apt install to install a few prerequisite packages. Next, we'll use apt install to install the Apache 2 web server and MariaDB database backend, followed by another apt install to install PHP and the required components. We'll create a LibreNMS user account, then we'll use git clone to pull down the LibreNMS source code from GitHub. We'll set ownership and the necessary permissions on the application directory. Then we'll authenticate as the LibreNMS user using sudo su and execute the installation script. Once the installation completes, we'll exit out of the LibreNMS shell. Next, we'll edit the PHP INI file using the nano editor. Press Ctrl W and search for time zone, then update the value to the correct time zone for your server. Save the change and close out of the nano editor. Then we'll do the same thing for the command line PHP INI file. Set your time zone, then save your changes and close out of the editor. Now we'll make sure the server time zone is set using the timedate ctl set time zone command. Then we'll edit the MariaDB configuration file. Add the two lines from the video description under the MySQL D section, then save your changes and close the editor. We'll restart the MariaDB service for the change to take effect. We'll elevate to a root shell using sudo su then execute the MySQL secure installation script. Follow the prompts to set a root MySQL password and mitigate known MySQL vulnerabilities. Back at the root shell prompt, we'll connect to the MariaDB database using the MySQL command line utility. Then using SQL commands, we'll create a LibreNMS database as well as a service account with full permissions to the new database. Flush privileges, Close the MySQL connection, then exit out of the root shell. Next, we'll create a copy of the PHP FPM config file, then edit it in the nano editor. Replace the www in square brackets with LibreNMS. Then scroll down to the user and group and change them from www data to LibreNMS. And finally, update the listen parameter to the value in the video description. Save your changes and close out of the editor. Next, we'll create an Apache 2 site configuration for LibreNMS. Copy the configuration from the video description, then save your changes and close out of the editor. Next, we'll disable the default Apache 2 site configuration. Enable the Apache 2 modules required for LibreNMS then enable the site configuration we just created. Then we'll restart the Apache and PHP FPM services for the changes to take effect. Next we'll switch back to the LibreNMS login using sudo su. Then we'll run pip3 install to install the required Python dependencies. Once completed, we'll exit out of the LibreNMS login. Then we'll copy the LibreNMS service to the system D folder and start and enable it. We'll copy the example snmp config file then edit it in the nano editor. Replace the random string goes here text with a random string, then save your changes and close the editor. We'll use CURL to download the LibreNMS SNMP binary, modify the permissions to make it executable, then enable and restart the SNMP daemon. Open a web browser and navigate to the DNS or IP address of the host slash install. Click the database icon to configure the database. Using the video description as a guide, complete the database credentials form, then click check credentials. Click the build database button. Click the key icon to create an admin account. Enter an admin username, password, and email address, then click the add user button. Click the checkmark icon to move to the next page, then click the validate your install link. Log in using the admin username and password created earlier. 
Welcome to Libra NMS, running on your Linux-based Apache 2 web server. To demonstrate how Libra NMS works, I'll quickly add the host device and let it run an SNMP scan against it. 